Before we start with today's message, I wanted to let you know that your time with God doesn't have to end when this devotion does. Oh, it's Pastor Mike, by the way. <laughs> if you still find yourself wanting more great resources that take you deep into God's Word and deeper into the faith that you want, just visit us at timeofgrace.org. However you learn best, I bet we've got something for you. From our sermons, to our video devotions, to written devotions, to books, to blogs, and, of course, to more podcasts. One more time, just visit timeofgrace.org. I'll see you there. There's a, a, a neat little story told about an eight-year-old boy named Philip. Uh, Philip had Down syndrome, and, and typical of children that age, the, the rest of the kids in his class had a hard time readily accepting him because of his differences. Well, on the Sunday after Easter um, in Sunday school, the, the, the teacher wanted to illustrate the new life and hope that we have, and so um, she brought these plastic, big, large plastic Easter eggs um, into the classroom. And they were all empty. And she said, here's your assignment. I want everybody to go out, go outside, and find something that symbolizes new life and hope. And so the kids excitedly went outside and, and they collected their items and they put them in the eggs and then they brought them into the teacher and they were so excited for the teacher to open them. And as the teacher opened each egg to reveal a, a leaf or a, or a flower or a butterfly, all the kids oohed and odd. And then, and then she got to one egg and she opened it and there was nothing inside. And the kids kind of complained. They said, "They said what? somebody didn't do their assignment. There's, there's nothing in it. And Philip raised his hand and he said, well, that one's mine. And the kids said, oh, Philip, you never do anything right. You didn't put anything in your egg. And Philip said, well, the egg is empty because the tomb is empty. Jesus rose. And there was silence. And from that moment on, Philip was a full-fledged member of that class. Well, not long after that, Philip actually passed away from an infection that, that most kids would have shrugged off. At his funeral, all of his classmates came marching up to the altar, not to put flowers on the altar, but they marched up with their teacher and they each placed an empty plastic egg on the altar. Philip understood that Jesus being alive means new life for him. He got it. Do we? living your life every single day because Jesus' bones are not in the grave, it means you never have to live a single moment of any day as though they still are. It's like one uh, recent convert to Christianity. He was asked why he became a Christian. He said, well, imagine that you're, you're traveling down a road and you come to a fork in the road and you don't know which way to go. And there are two men there. One is dead and one is alive. Which one would you ask which way to go? Friends, ask the living Jesus and he'll tell you which way to go. The living Jesus says, come, follow me. And he says, come, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And he says, be faithful even to the point of death, and I will give you the crown of life. Listen to him. He knows the way. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, teach me to follow you more and more each day until the day you give me the crown of life. In your name I pray it. Amen.